everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for this month's episode of HR in the Dark, where this month we're going to be talking about office romances. I mean, it's February, right? It's the month of love and a few other things. <laughs> but we want to talk about office fraternization policies. You know, who's dating who in the, in the workplace? I mean, that's like a hot topic, right? It's hot, all right. <laughs> and it can be a hot mess if you don't have some type of protection as a small business um, in terms of a policy around fraternization and what it should and should not include. So, you know, really, what, what is a fraternization policy? It really is, it is basically a dating policy or an office romance policy if you want to, you know, keep it simple um, and not legalize it in terms of uh, the terminology. But it's an office dating policy and it basically outlines what is acceptable, not acceptable, what's appropriate, not appropriate in terms of workplace relationships. This is really important to outline as a company. And the sooner you do that as a small business, as you continue to grow, the better. The reason, because once you lay that foundation, just like with any other policy or any other workplace rule, once that policy is in place, it is much easier for employees to adapt to that when you put it in front of them from the beginning, as opposed to having to backtrack and create these things um, after the fact when things could already be going on, right? So we want to try to be as proactive as possible. What does it really need to include? Um, it needs to address not only appropriate and inappropriate behaviors. Um, the reason why you need it, really, another reason that's really important is that it really could be the catalyst behind some very awkward workplace scenarios. Um, you know, people that are in relationships argue and fight. Do you want that in your office? Do you want that at a meeting? Uh, do you want that kind of tension and issue going on around other employees in the office? Probably. Probably not. Um, it also could be worse where it is serves as the catalyst behind uh, sexual harassment claims if the relationship goes wrong and it goes sour. So, you know, they could be legitimate sexual harassment claims, but sexual harassment claims and lawsuits against your company um, and your employees nonetheless. Um, it's a reflection of the, cor the corporate culture that you want to promote. So again, are you okay with having that kind of corporate culture? If you are, then you are. Uh, but you have to understand the consequences that are gonna come along with that. Um, and truthfully, you need it because you really could lose valuable employees, plural, or a very valuable employee as a result of not having some type of a policy and setting some type of parameters around workplace relationships. Case in point from the Harvard, Harvard Business Review is the case of Elizabeth and Brad. Elizabeth uh, was a New York sales person that worked for a very prominent organization, up and coming. She was rocking and rolling, doing her thing in her, in her office um, and in her job, she was really making waves. And Brad was the head of finance for the same organization. There was no reporting uh, relationship there, so he wasn't her boss. He didn't have anything to do with her, uh, her pay or anything like that. He just was a more senior individual that worked there uh, for the company. So it started with some harmless flirting. Um, in the office, they would exchange eyes and looks and, you know, chit chat with one another when they saw each other in the, in the office. Um, it wasn't very often, actually, that they saw each other, but when they did, you know, it was definitely some chemistry there. And Brad asked her out for drinks after work, and she obliged. So those that one time turned into multiple times, and eventually they ended up in a love affair um, at work. And this went on for about three weeks undercover. Nobody knew about it. They maintained their distance. Again, they didn't really see each other that often in the office. Um, but when they did, they you know kept their cool. And one night at dinner, they were busted by two co-workers who happened to see them at the restaurant of their choice that night. This was on Friday. And when they got to the office on Monday, you know what was going on. It was everywhere. Everybody was talking about it. And so Elizabeth's boss 
called her into the office and basically said, look, I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your personal life, but if there's things going on between you and anybody here in the office, I want to make sure that it stays under wraps. So make sure that you keep it cool. No problem. Elizabeth is, is good with that. So they kept this relationship going on for two or three months. And uh, Elizabeth was looking for Brad one day to provide him with some reports that he needed for, uh, from the sales team for something he was providing in terms of a finance report. And she wasn't able to get in touch with him for some reason. And so uh, a couple of days went by, she had been texting him, he hadn't been responding. And finally he responded and was like, sorry, I was tied up. She had heard some buzz around the office that he had been uh, training a new employee by the name of Claudia. So she asked them point blank, so were you busy with Claudia? He sends her a text back and says, basically, we should probably talk. Let's meet at the company cafe. So they meet the company cafe. She realizes, okay, we're here because he doesn't want me to, you know, explode and blow up in his face when he breaks up with me. And that's exactly what he did. He broke up with her and said, look, you know, I like you a lot, but, you know, I, I've moved on, basically. So I hope you can um, get past it and we can continue, you know, a civil working relationship. Um, and he left the cafe and she went into the bathroom and cried, you know, as a result of the breakup. So to make matters worse, after weeks and weeks of um, Claudia and Brad, she finds out that they're engaged. <laughs> they're going to get married. And um, now she's really devastated. You know, she just is like, I, I can't even believe this is happening to me right now. Um, and then here was the real kicker. Claudia actually ended up encountering uh, Elizabeth in the break room. And Claudia says, hey, do you mind if we talk? Elizabeth's immediate response while she was trying to contain herself was pretty much like, I don't wanna have anything to do with you. I have nothing to say to you. Um, however, Claudia was like, look, I was just letting you know that um, our manager thought it was a good idea that I accompany you to the upcoming conference um, that you're gonna be attending so I can kind of see you in action and learn from you. Now Elizabeth is really like, you got to be kidding me. So not, not only is am, have I been dumped at work by somebody that I was really, you know, in, in love with, but he dumped me, moved on to somebody else in my department, and then they got engaged. And now I have to train her and take her on a, on a conference, you know, to a conference to train her seriously. So she goes into her supervisor's office. She's like, look, this is a bad idea. I can't even believe that she would put me in this kind of situation. And her supervisor's response was basically Elizabeth, you're a great salesperson. I think Claudia could learn a lot from you. And so I'm gonna need you to basically put your big girl shoes on, get on the plane, take Claudia with you to do this training and get your job done. So at this point, Claudia is really at a, I'm sorry, Elizabeth is at a crossroads. You know, they're opening a new office in London. That's a possibility. She's always wanted to do international travel. Did she want to live there? Probably not. But this relationship between Brad and Claudia has really got her in a tizzy and she just is not really sure what to do. So London is an option. Um, she gets calls from headhunters all the time. So she could potentially um, entertain those phone calls and find a new job elsewhere forgetting the wonderful compensation package that she has, leaving all of the institutional knowledge behind and looking like she's running like, you know, a, a dog with her tail between her legs because her boyfriend broke up with her. Or she could stay there and figure out some kind of way to get through and get over the fact that she is a jilted lover in the workplace. So as you can see, these things um, can get ugly. Uh, it's a tough situation for Elizabeth, really. Um, and the organization is potentially going to lose a very valuable employee as a result. Now, does this situation mean that if they had a, a fraternization policy, um, that this relationship would not have happened? Not necessarily. It very well may have still happened. However, some of, somebody would have been responsible for going to their supervisor and divulging the relationship. And I can guarantee you that if Brad wasn't serious about 
Elizabeth at that point, he would not have made that step. And that would have told her right then and there that this was going nowhere and she would have gotten out of there sooner. Um, we don't know really what happened, how the Brad and Claudia scenario was broached. If they went to their supervisors and told, we don't really know. But we're, you know, in, in terms of from Elizabeth's standpoint, if there was a policy in place, somebody would have had to go report it. Um, and if they didn't report it, somebody would have been breaking the policy or they both would have been breaking the policy and they probably would have gotten fired. So, you know, there's, th that's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is this could have gone way worse. Workplace violence, again, social, uh, sexual harassment scenarios um, that could come out of this. And so this is the reason why it's so, so important to have a fraternization policy. What you want that policy to be is up to you. However, there needs to be something in place so that employees are not just willy-nilly dating all over the place and creating all kinds of awkward scenarios, not just for, you know, for them in the case that it doesn't work out, but also for the employees and the coworkers that have to interact with them on a regular basis. That is HR Pro HR in the dark for you um, this month. Again, thank you so much for joining. If you would like to subscribe to the podcast, please go to bit.ly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash expose HR in the dark. That's how you can subscribe to the podcast. When you subscribe, you will also be able to get a download of the 10 company policies every small business needs to have. So you definitely want to get that. If you know that your policies are not quite where they need to be and you would like to have those policies review, you can schedule a company policy review by going to bit.ly slash cpreview2018. That's C-P-R-E-I, I'm sorry, E-V-I-E-W-2018. And I'll put the slide up um, so you have that to get your company policy review. Our next episode airs uh, Wednesday, March the 7th at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time right here. You'll be able to gain access to it. Make sure you connect with me on social media um, as well because I will drop the link for the podcast through social media and on my email list to my subscribers. Um, we're going to talk about employment references. What can you say and what can you not say in regards to current and former employees Thank you again so much for joining me. I had a great time with you this evening and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye.